Hello, everyone. My name is David Pugh. I'm a staff scientist at the Cal Digitalization Core Laboratory. So in this tier ending video, I am going to walk you through the process of launching a job on IBEX that allocates resources and then spins up a Visual Studio Code server that you can connect to from your browser on your laptop or workstation. So this will allow you to develop on IBEX using your you know, using a nice IDE like Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Okay, so this video picks up from a previous training video, whose link I will put up above, and that video covered how to install Code Server in your home directory on IBEX. So that's a prerequisite before continuing with this video. So if you haven't yet installed Code Server, and you can log into IBEX and just type um, Code Server help. And if you get the help menu, that means that you properly uh, completed the previous video and were able to install code server. If you don't see this, then you need to go watch that video and install code server. Clear that out. Okay, so um, now what I want to do is I want to walk you through the process of launching a um, a job on IBEX that allocates resources and then spins up a Microsoft Visual Studio Code Server. So if we go to one of my um, data science template projects that I've created on the Calist Biz Lab uh, GitHub page to help users on IBEX get started with data science. So uh, we're going to look at the PyTorch GPU data science project template. Um, this tends to be my go-to template for uh, for training demos, because we have such a large uh, user base for PyTorch here at Calst. Um, the other uh, template projects for like Scikit-Learn, or TensorFlow, um, Horovod, Jax, things like this, will also have a similar script that, that you can use. So the scripts are in the, the bin directory. And there's two scripts. So there's a launch code server .sbatch. So this is going to be the script that we're actually, that is the job script that you will launch with sbatch uh, in a minute. And then there is the launch code server.srun. And you'll notice that it follows a similar pattern to the launch Jupyter server and launch Jupyter server.srun uh, scripts. And the process is basically the same. So if you've gone through my training videos on launching a Jupyter server and you're comfortable with the kind of two step process to do that on IBEX, it's going to be the exact same process here on. Uh, here with code server. So I'm just going to walk you through that again. So if you go to the launch code server .sbatch script, so this is the script where we're going to allocate resources via Slurm. I'm going to ask for two hours of wall time, a single node, one V100 GPU per node, uh, six CPUs to go with that GPU, and 64 gigs of memory. I'm also going to launch this job on the debug partition. So I tend to do all of my development on the debug partition. Um, it's really easy to get, you know, two, three, uh, up to four hours uh, of wall time on the debug partition. Um, and frankly, I'm not going to sit down at a terminal and do more than a few hours of development work. So the debug partition is, is good for me. If you want to have access to maybe more resources, you know, more than, you know, one or two GPUs uh, per node, um, then you can uh, launch the same script but on the batch partition and request whatever, whatever resources that you need. Note that it generally doesn't, it's generally not going to make that much sense to request more than one node, um, mostly because you're, if you're doing development work, you probably don't need you know, multiple nodes uh, for a development job, unless perhaps you were, uh, you were debugging some code that needed to run across GPUs that were distributed across nodes, um, but that's a fairly rare use case. Okay, um, so, but as you can see, other than allocating the resources via Slurm, all this script does is use srun to reserve a single port and then call the uh, launch code server .srun script. We need to use srun to reserve a port because we have lots of IBEX users. We have lots of users who like to use uh, Visual Studio Code Server. There could be multiple such users on the compute node where your server gets allocated. And we need to make certain that the ports on which these servers are sending their web traffic 
from the compute node back to your laptop or workstation are different for each user. Otherwise, there'd be clashes. So we'll just quickly take a look at the srun script. Now, this srun script, uh, whoop, wrong srun script. That's for the Jupyter server. We want uh, code server. Now, uh, the code server script has very similar structure to the, the Jupyter Lab uh, server srun script. So first, we need to set up our environment. So um, these project templates use Conda to, um, to create the environment for the software stack. So we, the assumption is that when you're launching code server as part of this project, you want to have access to that same software stack that you're using for this project and develop within that software stack. So we need to activate our Conda environment prior to, um, prior to launching our code server to make sure that we have access to that, that software stack. Now remember, code server itself is not installed inside a particular Conda environment. It's actually installed globally in your home directory. So this means that all of the, the settings or um, extensions that you might install to customize your code server experience are going to apply across all the Conda environments on your different projects. Now, if you read through this message here that I'm echoing out, you'll note that we're basically doing, again, the same process that we needed to do to connect to a, a Jupyter server running on a compute node. We, to create a secure connection, we need to do um, some SSH tunneling between um, our, um, our local machine to the login node on IBEX. But we need to, um, we need to make that connection um, taking it or using both information about the compute node on which our server is running, as well as the port that's assigned. So here um, we pick up the compute node um, that we're running on, and then we pick up the port that Slurm has assigned us, and we use that to construct the SSH tunneling command. Then once that's done, all we need to do is point our browser at a particular port uh, on which we forwarded the web traffic. Now, when we launch the uh, code server, there's a couple of, of extra features here that I just want to explain. So the first is um, authentication is none. So because we're using SSH tunneling to um, securely forward our web traffic from the compute node to our laptop or workstation, there's no need for any additional like password or, or login um, to access the code server. Um, the second is that we're using a non-default or a custom um, port basically where the server is running. So we need to pass information about the compute node and the, uh, the server port so that code server knows where to um, forward the web traffic. And then we want to start the code server in a particular directory. So we're going to be starting it in the project directory. So that means when we open code server um, and when we connect to it rather on, on our web browser, we'll see all these files here. Yeah, so all of your project files is, is the basic idea. OK, so if you've not already done so, um, you can you know click this button here, this green button, to use this as a template and create a brand new project under your own uh, GitHub account. Um, using this template, you can clone this repository uh, down to IBEX. Um, I've cloned the repository because I develop um, and maintain this repository. So I have a clone of it already on IBEX. Um, and if we just do a quick PWD, so you can see that I'm, I'm in uh, this PyTorch GPU data science project directory. And if I run it ls-l, we'll see here's all these files. And if we run um, an ls-l on the bin directory, we'll see that um, here we have a launch code server .s batch and a launch code server .s run. Okay. And here we have some, some scripts from a job that I previously ran, um, just playing around to make sure that it was working. Okay. So I'm going to clear this out. 
And so I'm going to launch a job. So all we need to do is sbatch launch code server dot sbatch. Okay, so I've submitted the job. And I've already been allocated the resources. They're running on a particular node. So now all I need to do is take a look at the, the Slurm output and Slurm error file. So launch code server and then the job number. And let's look at the dot out first. So when you look at dot out, so you should see this output. So these are just the logs letting you know that code server has, um, has successfully started up. Um, and then if we look at the error file, you'll see we have our two, uh, two URLs. So the first thing that we need to do is to create the SSH tunnel. So to create the SSH tunnel, you just copy that SSH tunneling command, open up a new terminal or shell and paste it in. And so now we are forwarding web traffic from a particular compute node on IBEX, the GPU, in this case, GPU 510-32 on port 12180. And we're forwarding that to my, uh, my local workstation. So we can just minimize that. We don't need it anymore. Now that we've done, uh, we've created that SSH tunnel, we can copy this URL and paste it into the browser. And then after maybe about 10 seconds, we should get access to our Visual Studio Code server running on the debug partition, in this case, um, on IBEX. Now, the first time that you, um, you know, when you launch this server, um, and you've not used um, Visual Studio Code server on IBEX before, you're going to land on a welcome page. You're going to be asked to do quite a lot of customization. Um, you only kind of have to do this the first time. So you can pick whether you want light um, or dark mode or high contrast mode. I'll just go with the dark mode. Um, then if you've used Visual Studio Code before, you know that it has quite a lot of support for um, for many different programming languages. And there's many different uh, extensions for those languages that help customize the behavior of Visual Studio Code for your, um, uh, for the programming language that you use. Um, so I'll just go ahead and show you how to uh, install uh, an extension. So if you're developing with Python, you're almost certainly going to want the Microsoft Python extension. So if you just type Python into the search menu, the first one that will come up should be uh, ms-python. Um, so we'll go ahead and install that. Um, it just takes uh, a few tens of seconds, I think, to install this extension. There's many more extensions that you might want to look into uh, installing, uh, depending on what, what you plan to use or the kind of development work that you plan on doing. So I'm just going to show you how to install uh, the MS Python extension because I think most of you are probably going to be using Python. So you'll want to install this extension. OK, done. So we can go back to our welcome menu. Um, I'll just close that and go back to our welcome menu. Um, so you can continue on through this tutorial to learn more about uh, Visual Studio Code. So my kind of assumption for this, this video at least, is that you already have some experience using Microsoft Visual Studio Code. You don't need a tutorial on how to use Microsoft Visual Studio Code. Um, you just need a tutorial on how to launch Visual Studio Code as a server application that you can access via your web browser on IBEX. So I'm not going to go through the command palette and all of these other things uh, or how to navigate through your files uh, or things like that. Um, one thing I do want to show you um, is that if you go to open a terminal, so you can click on this hamburger icon up here and launch a terminal, new terminal. Okay, cool. So 
um, now we've got access to a terminal. And what I want to, to show you is um, the uh, conda environment. So if we do uh, which conda, you'll see that in this case, the conda environment for our project is not actually the active conda environment um, in this terminal. So instead, uh, what we need to do is we need to uh, conda activate manually activate the, the conda environment uh, for this uh, for this project. And now if we do which Python you'll see that that conda environment is uh, is in fact the active conda environment. Um, so that's only the the slight um, slight difference um, that you might experience or that you might have to to do to remember to manually do. Um, but if you go back and look at our Explorer, so you can see here, these are all of the, um, um, all the files from our working directory for the project. Um, I think I have a few Python files in here. So, you know, if you wanted to open up one of your training scripts and you can see here that you've got all the nice syntax highlighting and things like that, that you've come to know and love with Visual Studio Code. Um, but now you know how to do it on Ibex. So, Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so that's about all I have uh, for this training video. Uh, feedback is greatly appreciated. So if there are other aspects of using Microsoft Visual Studio Code um, on IBAX that you'd like to hear more about, you know, please just do let me know and I'll uh, do the best I can to um, either add some additional training videos or, um, or help you out in whatever way I can. So thanks very much and continue to check out the, uh, the YouTube channel. We have all kinds of great content and more content to come uh, to try to help it make it a little bit easier for data science machine learning users to get started uh, on IBEX, particularly with GPUs. So that's it. Bye for now.